If you've ever wanted to test antennas or RF circuits, the Nano VNA V2 might be just the thing for you. In a previous video, we went over the Nano VNA V1, and I decided to pick up the V2. The frequency response is much wider on the V2, which makes it much more useful for our electronics projects. With the current climate, I'm finding things are a lot easier to just source them from Amazon lately. A lot of my eBay orders are being cancelled some weeks after the fact, so it's easier for me just to pick them up from Amazon and then I can showcase them here. The V2 covers the frequency range that we're interested in for our electronics projects, has a good display, onboard battery, and all the things we need. As usual with Amazon orders, it came packaged just fine, shipped in just a, a day or two. Came with all the components we need, including the Nano VNA V2, the SMA cables, some caps, a USB cable, and most importantly, the calibration set. I'm going to put some links down below this video to other channels and videos that cover the VNAs in depth. If you're not familiar with how they work or how to use them, well, you definitely want to check out uh, the other videos I've linked. They'll, they'll cover everything pretty in depth, whereas this video, we're just going to take a quick look and power it up and play with it for the first time. Now, the Nano VNA V2 is a vector network analyzer. It allows us to visualize the frequency domain. Across the axes, we have the different frequencies and we have the amplitudes, but also overlaid are multiple other methods of display, including a Smith chart, which is really handy to visualize the response curve of any RF circuit, or in my case, antennas. Now what look like just SMA connections are actually the calibration set. There's an open, a short, and a 50 ohm load. And we're going to use those in the calibration procedure. The SMA cables that come with it are just fantastic. Really nice and flexible. And I've never seen blue ones before, but pretty neat. The Nano VNA V2 itself is kind of an interesting construction. It's not in a sealed case. It's a sandwiched PCB construction where they sort of crammed everything into such a small space, but it is quite wonderful actually. You're going to want to hang on to the instruction sheet that comes with it. This is just a layout of the menu structure and it's really easy once you get your head around the layout, but until then, you may want to refer to this to find the menu that you're interested in. The most common that you're going to need is the calibration menu and then turning off the markers for the different displays. Super important note here is that there's a protective film on the LCD that's left on during assembly. You want to disassemble your Nano VNA V2 to remove that film. Don't try to pull it out from underneath the upper layer. Simple Phillips screwdriver, remove the four screws holding the top face plate on, then you can remove the protective cover. There's the tab hidden underneath. Once you remove that, go ahead and reinstall your four screws and we're set to measure some RF circuits. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. Now the use of a vector network analyzer is beyond the scope of this video and truthfully I am not the person to teach it because I bought this piece of equipment to learn and further my knowledge and my skill set so I am in no position to teach anyone yet. But I can share some tips and tricks that I found with this unit. You want to get yourself a stylus. This little stylus I have is from a, an old uh, Android tablet. You can use any piece of pointed plastic as long as it's a, a soft tip on it that you're not going to scratch the screen, but you don't want to be using your fingers on this screen. Uh, anybody's fingers are going to be too big to get accurate control, but a simple little stylus makes things really painless. As well, use the scroll wheel at the top when you need to pan back and forth, use that right left scroll wheel to move your cursor to the area you're interested in, specifically to measure the frequency that you're interested in. 
Firmware updates are available for them on GitHub. I'm not going to go into updating it here. And honestly, I don't often update the firmware on things like this. If it's working and not having major functionality issues, I really don't see the need for me to update unless it's something really critical. It's just not worth the risk. I'll link these RF demo boards down below as well. These are really cool. These are different filters and components mounted to a PCB. In these cases, you can see we have bandpass filters and, and notch filters and low pass filters and high pass filters, but it allows you to just visualize with the Nano VNA uh, the different filters and different components to really get a hands-on understanding of how to measure them. Very cool. Next critical tip, anytime you change any settings on the Nano VNA, you need to run a calibration. If you're changing the span or the frequency at any time, you want to run a new calibration. This ensures you have the maximum calibration points for the area you're measuring. If you calibrate it at full span, all the way from say five kilohertz to three gigahertz, you've only got a few points of measurement across that whole range. And then if you zoomed in to say 500 megahertz span, you would only have a tiny portion of your available measurements. So anytime you change a setting, run a new calibration. You can also save the calibrations in memory, but for me, it's easier just to run a fresh calibration. It only takes a few seconds and you're all set. I'll be doing a lot more projects with this. Specifically, I've been using it for measuring my 2.4 gigahertz antennas for the rescue project. Uh, I found, as expected, many antennas that I had in the bin do not perform at all. They're not resonant at 2.4 gigahertz. And in fact, some of them are just wrong. You can see on the Nano VNA that it turns out they were actually 433 megahertz antennas or some other 900 series antennas antennas like LoRa. Uh, pretty cool to be able to test them finally hands-on for a very reasonable price. Um, vector network analyzers were in the thousands, tens of thousands of dollars and now under a hundred bucks you've got a unit that yeah it's not lab grade but do they work? Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Nano VNA V2. Throw a comment down below if you get one or what you've been up to with your RF circuits. I'd love to hear from you. Good luck in all your projects.